Greetings, everyone, and a very warm welcome to another edition of Marketing the Invisible. I'm Tom Poland, beaming out to you from the Sunshine Coast in Australia, joined today by Barbara Spector. Barbara, g'day, warm welcome from Madanda. Where, where are you hanging out? I'm hanging out in Northern California, where uh, it's pretty warm right now. It's perfect weather. You you had the the deluge in winter, right? All the... oh, it was it was just horrendous, horrendous. It but it got us out of the drought. Yeah, we've been for years, for years. True, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather have a bit of wet weather than droughts. That's for sure. Living here in Australia, we know all about that. Mm -hmm. So, um, folks, Bob is the CEO of Smart Moves and has spent more than twenty six years helping CEOs and business leaders, business owners with sales transformation, arguably the pointiest end of the business. You've got sales coming in regularly. Everyone's pretty happy. People are getting paid and we're growing. And if it's not happening, it doesn't matter what else you do. It's like straightening deck chairs on the Titanic. So it's critically <laughs> important to every organization and every individual connected with that organization, let alone the clients we're going to help. So um, broad experience across a broad range of industries. Uh, so chances are it doesn't really matter what you're doing right now, if you've got a business or you're a senior executive responsible for growth, you're going to get something great out of this. Our title today uh, is How to Unleash the Power of What You Don't Know About Your Sales Team to Drive Growth. There are some unknown unknowns. Our time starts now. Question number one is Who is your ideal client? We work with basically in three arenas, but it's all within the small to medium sized business space. Although we do work with enterprise size companies as well, but mostly within the small, medium size, 20 million to 500 million. And Perfect. specifically, CEOs, sales leaders, HR VPs. Oh, as well. Okay. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. so how would you describe the problem that you solve? Well, you know, I'll just talk about CEOs. CEOs are so frustrated right now because they, their forecasts are inaccurate. Mm -hmm. And when we talk to them, there's two basic problems. There's delayed closing, especially because people are nervous about the economy right now. And there's not enough new business coming in to make up for that. Right. And, yeah. So, and when we talk, go ahead. So, so, yeah, so, so let's, let's carry it on then to question three, because we're going to talk about the symptoms. Let's unpack this. What's, you, you talked about delayed closes. You talked about a lack of new sales coming through to compensate for that, those delays. What else would someone, if someone's listening to this and they're going, yeah, I need, I need, I need to find out more about what Barbara does, how would they tell that? What are, what are the symptoms of what's going on? Well, the, here's the interesting thing. What companies look at are the symptoms and not the root cause. There's a difference. Mm. Um, so the symptoms might look like, oh, we've, you know, we, we've got a bloated pipeline. Our, our win rates are too low. And they think that maybe they need to do training and how to help their salespeople be better at closing. Right. That's a symptom. That's a symptom. And but the and, cause. Yeah, the cause, sorry, go on. The, the cause is not, probably not that. What it probably is, is that the salespeople don't know how to reach decision makers. They don't know how to create urgency. And so if they are talking to the right person, they don't know how to create urgency because they don't ask the right questions. And so, so there could be the talk to the person who's not actually able to make the decision. It doesn't matter how good your closing skills are going to be. Exactly. <laughs> and if they are talking to the right person, there's no no reason for that person to make a decision now as opposed to delaying it. And we know when people delay decisions, they just wander off and it drops off the radar scope of their mind. So exactly. you're talking about, I mean, your, your ideal clients are growth orientated. They're sales assertive, if you like. They're concerned. Mm -hmm. They're going to try stuff. What would you say would be some of the common mistakes that your ideal clients have made? They tell you about this after they become a client of yours. <laughs> Actually, they tell me beforehand, but that's right. okay. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, they're as I said, they're looking at symptoms, not root cause, which is what we help them to yeah. identify. Right. right. They, they are. They don't understand that salespeople, sales managers, and even sales leaders have hidden mindsets that they can't easily perceive mm. that are keeping things stuck. So for example, let me give you a good example. So for example, right. on all three levels, you know, you've heard this expression, people buy from people they love, like, and, and trust. Well, it's all well and good to be liked, but it's another thing to need to be liked which means you have a need for approval, which means you don't ask your customers or your mm. prospects mm. deep enough questions for fear you're going to offend them. 
That's just right. one. Okay. That's a good one. That's a big one. So um, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a side question here. It sounds like quite a lot of the work that you do initially with a new client is diagnostic, not saying, you know, rushing in with a sales program, but trying to figure out exactly where the issue is. Would that be right? That's absolutely positive. That's absolutely on the money. And if I were to use an analogy, I mean, you wouldn't go to a doctor if you had chest pain and have him operate on you, you know, thinking it's heart surgery just because he asked you two or three questions, only to discover you just have indigestion. Yeah, right? or, or, or worse still, oh, you've got a chest pain, quick, under the knife. Um, exactly. So that, that, old, that old saying, which is still very apt, is, you know, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. I'm inter very interested in that, and I, I'm interested in folks, I'd love for folks to really listen up to that and consider that, that very often we just go in and, and enroll for another sales course or we, we enroll with us, but we really haven't done a root cause analysis. And that's, I think, one of the things that set you apart, Barbara, is the your due diligence you do and the patience you exercise in really figuring out what the problem, the cause of the problem is before you apply the Band-Aid solutions. Let's, let's flip this to uh, a top tip. So this is question five. What's one valuable free action that someone listening to this could take? It's not going to solve the whole problem, but it, it might be a step in the right direction. That's a big question. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 tough. it's, it's unfair, <laughs> I know. Just, just give me a second. Well, first of all, what, if, it were, if, if I were having the kinds of problems that we see with CEOs or sales leaders, I would not put people into a sales training to fix it. I'd find out what it is. Yeah. So one of the things they could do is literally do a diagnostic. It's like a sales MRI of what the whole organization actually looks like, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and be able to face that and then make decisions based on that, and then do sales training after that. Right. Because otherwise, yeah. it's a Band-Aid. Yeah, I think if nothing else, someone sits down and says, like, Let, let's do an adequate diagnostic. And I know you can help with that. But if that, that's the decision. It's a step in the right direction rather than just buying more sales training. Thank you for that. Um, question six, a valuable free resource. Where can people go to find out more about this? Okay. Well, part of, the, part of what we like to look at, and it's imperative that we look at, are what the mindsets of those three entities in a sales organization have in common meaning sales managers, salespeople, sales leaders, and they all have the same hidden mindsets that get in their way, positively or negatively, by the way. So one of the right. things that we have as a free gift for your audience is something called, it's a special report called Mastering Your Sales Mindset, Multiply Your Sales. And they can receive that by literally going to http theguide.vip. So it's the guide.vip. Folks, what you're going to discover there is nine different mindsets. So you can identify which one you fit into. And then, very importantly, having done the diagnosis, which we've talked about, have a look at four tips to overcome whatever hurdles that are, are, are in your way. 20 seconds left, Barbara. What's the one question I should have asked you but didn't? Uh, do you believe in the idea that if you can't measure it, you can't fix it? And do you? That's true. <laughs> that's a quick question, trick question, but that's really what it comes down to. If you can't Perfect. measure, you can't fix it. Perfect. Barbara Spector, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.marketing.com. 5hourchallenge.com